I'm so bad with money. Like, I just got into crypto. Like, I'm so bad with money. I'm three years sober. I need a vice. I need, like, it, right now, it's texting and driving and crypto. Help. Like, help. Uh, yeah, dude, I live in a bad area. Like, the only grocery store in my community is a cricket wireless. Like, that's bad. I live in a studio apartment. Ugh. A studio? Dude, like, I was watching a documentary on, like, prisons in Norway. And I was like, that one's nicer than mine. Like, yo, he's got an Xbox. Like, what the fuck? I don't know what's sadder, watching documentaries on prison or living in a studio apartment. Someone, like my friends, because I had never lived alone. I'm so broke. I found I lived alone. They're like, good for you. What? A Tell me about the place. Tell me about living in a studio. Fuck you. What? What are the amenities of living in a studio apartment? Well, I can see the oven from everywhere. That is an amenity that I have. My friends are also losers. Yeah, they are, dude. My buddy talked to his dad for the first time in a year. His dad told him he's gonna die alone. That's wishful thinking. He's gonna die with roommates. Like, he's... <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Nobody in my life is dying without a co-signer. Like... Not good. My friends are such losers. The type of losers who wear their keys on carabiners outside of their fucking pants. Not you guys, you guys are great. You guys rock climb, you guys are chalky, we love it. <laughs> They're the kind of guys who do that, and I'm like, why? You gotta keep that Honda Civic key that doesn't start safe? Like, I wanna keep that, so yeah, I don't wanna lose that in a mosh pit, right? Like, wow. My buddy wore his carabiner keys on his wedding day. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I hear wedding bells, I hear divorce bells, ding 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 ding, like every jangle. Like that's a sham wedding, right? Yeah, what, what do you buy for a sham wedding? Like an air fryer with a receipt? Like, I don't know. It's funny. All my friends are getting married. I'm at this age now. Yeah. And <laughs> if you get married in a destination, fucking no. And two, if it's not a beach, no. <laughs> I had to go to a destination wedding recently in Richmond, Virginia. That's a shithole. Every hotel has that bookshelf of like brochures of shit you can do in that town. This is what you can do in Richmond. Plantation tour, plantation tour, plantation tour. Hay bale ride to a plantation. Right? The dude behind the desk is like, oh no, we got a lot of stuff. We got tobacco plantations and cotton plantations. A lot of stuff. I'm dating a wonderful woman. Not for long. Uh, <laughs> I, give, I, I give it to Labor Day, you know, and she's, uh, she's cool. She's from India. Every person and her whole family is from India. Why is that the, that's not the punchline, asshole. Like, like, there's so many of them, a subcontinent, I don't know. Like, everyone in her whole family is from India, and they're all in arranged marriages, dude. That's a lot of pressure. She's like, dude, if we get married, we're gonna be the first ever love marriage in my family. Bitch, same for mine, you know? Like, <laughs> about love. Every marriage in my family was like, she's pregnant, bro. Like, step up. My dad just turned 70. 70. That's a good age. This is something I'm learning. There's good old and there's bad old. 70's nice, dude. Mellowed out. 80's bad. 80 in this country, you might accidentally wake up as president. And... <laughs> That's not good. I don't like knowing someone controls nuclear weapons and can eat soup alone. I don't like that. That's... You ever, like, meet, like, imagine meeting, like, a Secret Service guy who's, like, covered in blood? 
And he's like, relax, it's tomato bisque. <laughs> Dude, my dad is 70. He's just says whatever the fuck he wants now. He's like, not suicidal, but ready to die. Yeah. <laughs> They're just pulling out of the driveway. Three years left! Like, what? <laughs> He'll say whatever the fuck he wants now, like, it, 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 in public. And he's like, dude, I'm gonna be president soon, I gotta get it in now. Like, <laughs> like, at this volume, he'll go, that's a good enchilada. That's an ugly baby. I don't think you needed a stand when you pointed, you know? <sighs> Multicultural? Surprise, yeah. My dad's Mexican-American, my mom's from Sweden. That's a long way to travel the earth to get another boring white guy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for them, dude. I do. I feel bad for them. They want, like, a sexy biracial soccer player. No. <laughs> they got a recovering pill addict with a city planning degree. Yeah. <laughs> city planning degree. <laughs> Theater majors are like, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> Theater majors are like, I can sing and dance. What can you do? Nothing. Turns out, all the cities are planned. <laughs> There's a system in college. You know, you get addicted to the right pill. Adderall. You get addicted to Adderall, you get the computer science degree, you get a family. Boom, boom, boom. That was my freshman orientation. It's like a little blunt, but all right. I gotta do the, Adderall's the right pill. I gotta do the wrong pill. Xanax, yeah. I, Adderall good, Xanax bad. Like, these are the job openings for a Xanax degree. Manage a SoundCloud rapper. President's son. Uh, I don't know. I'm waiting for the call. I'm pushing my father to run. Yeah, it's fun. I don't know. Let's see. It's a handful addict. Let's see. All right. Okay. Friends are losers. I had a friend come out. Also a loser. He came out of the closet last month for Pride Month. That's not doesn't make him a loser. But he came out not as gay or trans. He came out as an asexual. No sex. That's more of a text. <laughs> We need a parade for no sex? <laughs> what was that phone call home like? He's like, Mom, Dad, I don't fuck. <laughs> and they're like, we know. <laughs> they're getting jabs in. They're like, you play that Hogwarts game a lot. <laughs> yeah. Friends are losers. Yeah, man. I'm a loser. I have one sibling. I have one identical twin brother. That sucks. We're biologically the same guy. He's so much more successful than me. It is not nature. It is not nurture. It's you. My identical twin brother is an officer of the Special Ops of the Navy. Like, I do this for, like, some money, you know? <laughs> uh, thank you for not applauding for him. Fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, he's in the Red Chinese Sea. I hope he dies. Yes. <laughs> half Mexican, half Swedish. My girlfriend had the nerve. She's like, do you speak Swedish or Spanish? <laughs> what? <laughs> to Texas public schools. I'm lucky I speak English. Yeah. I'm half Mexican, half Swedish. That means I have a Mexican grandma. That means I got a Swedish grandma. Which means I love my Mexican grandma. I don't know if you all know, Swedish people have a reputation not for being loving. They are cold people. They sleep on the cheapest furniture, Ikea, and they're just daywalkers. Husks of people. And for the year, the year that my, my Swedish grandmother spent a year in our house, this bitch didn't blink for a year. 
You ever seen Midsummer? You know, the people who jumped off the cliff, like just walking around, like. I remember how this lady would fucking tuck me in at night as a child. She would come down from the ceiling and. And eyes so open, broken English, she'd go, Samuel, say your prayers. That's a threat. <laughs> like, say your prayers, man. Mexican grandma, this is how my abuela would talk to me, and she'd go, Do you say your prayers? Yeah. You brush your teeth? Yeah. Here's a churro. That's right. Who do I love? It's funny dating an Indian woman. She's uh, she's cool. Her parents are not. Uh, <laughs> turns out they don't like this. Yeah, it's so funny. They're like, they're just trying to get her married, you know. And and she's it's like Shark Tank. Every time she leaves the room, you know, they're like, what do we need to do to get you to drive off the lot with her today? Like. <laughs> They're like, you know, they're like, customarily, this is what we offer to help with your medical school loans. I'm like, don't do that, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put it all on Dogecoin, so. <laughs> don't wanna do that. I'm cool, I'm happy that I met her. The last date I went on before I met her, I went on a date, it was kind of weird. I went on a date with a woman, and this woman claimed to be something I didn't know. It was demisexual. Demi, I thought it was someone who wanted to fuck Demi more. It's not, yeah. <laughs> You already laughing. You know what these people are. You know what these fucking people are. Demisexual. I didn't know what the fuck it was, dude. I was like, what is demisexual? She said, I have to get to know you. Okay. <laughs> Verbatim, she said, I gotta know more than just your name before I sleep with you. That's like most people. I was like, yo, I didn't bring you to a glory hall, you know? <laughs> This is not going to be eyes wide shut, we're at a top golf. like, <laughs> have a little fun. I'm sober, no one should clap for that, Did, no. No, no, fuck no, 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 you're sober at my age, I fucked up, <laughs> I earned it. There's a couple milestones that aren't milestones, like if you did any of these three things before 30, eh, that's an L. One is sober, two, getting very religious out of nowhere. <laughs> if you've always been that religion, that's great. I'm still, I've always been Lutheran, I'm a Lutheran. I don't know if you know what Lutherans are, we're broke Catholics, that's... <laughs> yeah, man, we, we are Catholics negative drip, like... <laughs> we have no gold, no lawyers. No Vatican, no lawyers. <laughs> No lawyers. If a Lutheran pastor fucks a kid, he's actually going to prison. Like, <laughs> which is a weird sales pitch, but I'm an evangelical, you know? I gotta spread the good word, you know? <laughs> My church has asked me to stop doing that. <laughs> All are welcome. Okay, now what's funny though, if you are a practicing whatever and you've always been, that's good. But if you found a religion at 28, what are you running from? <laughs> Nothing good behind you, dude. That's a motel floor blackout. Like, that's you waking up and coming, damn. This isn't even my La Quinta. Like, I'm supposed to be at the airport one. Like, the third one is selling Herbalife. Like, <laughs> funny. How you get sober is an indicator of your wealth. It's something I had to learn. What you call it is how rich you are. Like, rich friends of mine didn't do rehab. They did something baller. They did something nice. They did recovery. Recovery's pimp. I, I, I recommend it. Just for like a week off. Like, recovery is where your parents send you to an island. On that island, you finger paint with Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> then you come home, you crash a self-driving car somehow, and learn absolutely nothing because Molly is California sober. Like, and it's festival season. Let's put on our native hat, dude. Like, 
middle class people, we go to rehab. That's what we call it. In other words, your mom's got to work now. Yes. <laughs> Joanne Fabrics is hiring. Let's go. <laughs> I don't knock it. Poor people, push with me, Denver. This is the truest part of the joke. Poor people, when they get sober, they call it prison. <laughs> I got a buddy from high school. As he puts it, it's a two and a half year detox <laughs> in San Angelo State. <laughs> what a positive branding of that experience. I'm, I'm, ha I'm glass half full though, like two years no math, like his skin is gonna look amazing. Like, <laughs> what's funny about sobriety is like I have so many alcoholics in my family and they blame booze for every problem, they just continue to drink. It's like this cycle, right? Sober people, though, though, in my life, they blame sobriety for their problems. The fuck do you do with that? Like, I was at a party, and a friend of mine who's also sober was like, look at us, man. <laughs> LaCroix. I was like, yeah. And he goes, dude, now we're sober. There's a couple of boring guys, huh? I put my hand on his chest. I was like, you never had a personality. Like, <laughs> bro, like the last time he and I did coke, he talked about Settlers of Catan. <laughs> no, dude, it's like a world-building thing. You gotta like, build roads and shit. Okay, great. It's funny, people try to pretend to get sobriety and it comes off as fake, dude. Like a co-worker was like, I get addiction. I'm addicted to spin class. <laughs> Bitch, like, I've never stolen from my family to ride a bike that goes nowhere. Like, <sighs> I gotta get out on something positive. My sex life is fucked up, it's ruined, yeah. <laughs> Ruin. I can't really fuck anymore. I'm a young buck, dude. I had my, I had my fourth kidney stone recently. Yeah. I'm a young bloomer. <laughs> Medical problem. <laughs> What's funny about men carrying a kidney stone is like, dudes are like, bro, I don't know if you know this, men passing a stone, equal amount of pain is when women give birth. I asked every mother, dude. I was like, does it feel good the second you pass a child? And they're like, no. And they got really angry. They're like, don't call it passing. And that's fair. The ladies, carrying a kidney stone to term. Excruciating. But fellas, this is what science doesn't want you to know. Scientists hate this fact. The second it came out of me, better than any nut I've ever had in my entire life. Bro, sexually, I'm chasing a dragon. To get that new kind of nut, like... Uh, I've smoked a cigarette indoors afterwards, like... And you guys are in for a treat. Let's get your host back up here.